Hey everyone, what's up? This is Simon from Galaxies.dev and today we're gonna talk about draw navigation in your React Native application using the new Expo Router. So that means we're gonna have file-based routing and we're gonna actually implement a custom site menu. So we're gonna start with the basics and then move into a custom implementation. I already started with a tabs template. Yeah, that sounds like a bad idea if we want to implement a draw or a menu, but that actually gave us file-based routing um, and we can remove most of the files. To implement the draw, we also need to install the React Navigation Draw package um, because React Navigation is anyway used under the hood of Expo Router. We need the gesture handler, which is used to get this cool swipe gesture, of course. And then we also need React Native Reanimator, which makes the process even better. Uh, once you get all of that, you can also head over to the Babel config and add the React Native Reanimated plugin as the last entry in the plugins list. So again, I don't know why it has to be last, but that works usually. So what I did so far is I cleaned the project a bit. This is actually kind of a template I would like to have. So maybe um, in the future I will use um, create expo stack, which might make this a bit easier. For now, I will just start with the official template because, well, that's what we all of us got. I have a layout file at the root. Now, this is the layout file that will be called initially when using the Expo router. However, in many cases, you might have um, stack layout defined here at the root level and then you're gonna have all the draw stuff inside another folder. So check out the other videos on this channel on how to use the Expo file-based router in different combinations. We will just do it here at the root level, but again, you could easily do this in a subfolder and then have a login page and then move to an inside page. So. Additionally, I created three pages. Index page is the one that will be displayed initially, and then we got news and profile. So they have just the standard setup. There's nothing special about these three files. Now, let's see how we can create a draw with Expo file-based routing. Uh, we can start by using the draw, which we can import from Expo router. Actually, I think, yeah, we need the Expo router draw package. Then we're gonna hit save, and then we get an error. Well, I don't care. Let's try to reload this. And voila, we have a draw. And this video is finished. Thanks for watching. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, we're going to do some more. But it's really impressive that we just have to put in the draw here. Um, and then we're just like, it just works. We can switch between these. We are news, we are profile, and we got back to index. But of course, what we see here is probably not the result that you want to have in your app. Actually, I mean, in some cases, it's probably enough, but what this does is basically picking up the files in that folder. So you had a folder with that layout file and the files next to it, it would just pick up those files. Same as if you would use the tabs layout. But of course, the interesting part is how we can customize the draw component now, as we're gonna first try to um, style the drawer in here and then later we're gonna see how we can really like customize it exactly in the way that we need it. Um, there are a few things that I want to mention as well. First, this is what I found in the docs usually that we should put the import React Native Gesture Handler at the top of our application. So I will do this in the root layout file. I'm not entirely sure if we have to, but somewhere in the React Navigation docs, it was mentioned, um, especially uh, right here. If you are building for Android or iOS, do not skip this step or your app may crash in production, even if it works fine in development. So that got me really scared. <laughs> so, um, this is not applicable to other platforms. So I will definitely add that import. I don't know exactly if it is still required, uh, but I will just put it here. Also, what I found in the documentation is that starting with Expo SDK 50 um, and the Expo Router version 3, we should wrap something around the draw component, uh, and that is the gesture handler root view. So let's do this. Uh, let's put in the gesture handler root view, and we will use a flex of one. And then we can close it down here. Okay, um, no real changes in our application, um, but again, starting with Expo SDK 50, and I think I'm on 49 here, uh, this will be required. And I wanna show you how to do it. Okay, 
So as I said, it automatically or Expo Router automatically picks up our files here. If you want more control over this, simply disable Copilot. <laughs> no, I will just disable it for this video. Um, and then let's implement the actual screens um, one by one. So if we do it uh, with additional draw screens inside the draw component here, we can define name, options, label, icons, and all of these cool things. And that's of course what we want. So the name is the name of the file. So if you want to style the index file, or if we want to give some custom stuff to the index file, we would put in index here. And then we can have our options object, just like we would have with uh, React Navigation. And we could probably say draw label, uh, something like home because right now the draw label says index that's probably not the best way so let's call it home and voila it becomes home and we can now do a few things in here so we can also change the header up here so we can change the header title to be home as well uh, and that already looks a lot better additionally I would like to use an icon so I can also specify a draw icon now and the draw icon, in this case, uh, we can destructure and get the params so we can get the size and the color. And we're gonna use this to display an Ionicon. Ionicons from Expo Vector icons. Name, uh, let's use, why is my microphone completely covering my keyboard today? I can't see anything. Uh, it's like seven years of YouTube and I still haven't learned how to position this thing correctly. I don't know, I should put it to the top or something I don't know it has been less annoying in other videos I don't know why it's so annoying right now anyway um, we can use the size and the color to that function and then we see we have an icon in the correct color in the correct size in our draw now we can uh, copy this over and pretty much reuse the same procedure for the other screen so we're gonna have two other screens uh, we got the second one, the file name is news. I want to call this like news uh, and the header is something like news feed. Just like, let, let's do this a uh, bit different so we can see the differences between header title and draw title. Uh, of course, that should be newspaper outline. And then finally we had the profile page. Make sure, of course, you use the file names of the files that you created. So if you create something different, uh, you probably want to use those file names uh, my profile okay so here we go we have a nice draw component we have the titles so again that's the header title that we've set here um, and this is the draw label this is the draw icon this is the profile screen this is the home screen and this is actually a pretty decent setup already for a lot of draw applications um, you could go ahead and add some colors in here now if you wanted to. So uh, do we want to do this right now or do we want to do this at a later point? Mm, maybe, maybe we're going to do it later. So this is the basic setup. What I want to show you next is how we can also control the draw from code because that wasn't very obvious to me. Maybe it was to you because you're smarter than me. Uh, that wouldn't surprise me. So if you go into your home page now, uh, we could add a button. Uh, actually, let's add a function first. I will call this const on toggle. And in this function, I want to basically toggle the menu. Now with React Navigation, uh, that's not too hard. Where, where is React Navigation? Here is React Navigation. Uh, if you check out the drawer, mm -mm -mm. <laughs> by the way, don't use initial route name. That's usually a bad idea with the Expo router. You can use a redirect instead. Um, where is it? Uh, my dimensions, I don't know. I can't find it anywhere. But basically you can access the draw here, um, but it's also not working very well with TypeScript. So I found a different way to achieve this, which was actually quite interesting. So in my on toggle, we can still use the navigation we get with the Expo router. So we can use use navigation, but source use navigation. I don't feel very comfortable about that import. That should be a different place. Yeah, just Expo Router. That's better. So what we can do with navigation um, is we can't really use something like menu toggle or so. 
Now, what we can do is we can dispatch an action. So dispatch is still available here. And now we can import draw actions from React Navigation. Again, this is used anyway under the hood. And we can use close draw, jump to, open draw, or toggle. So I don't know, we can use toggle or we can just use open draw. And we're gonna dispatch that action. And now we just need to put in a simple button here. So button from React Native, title, uh, open draw, and on press, I wanna call on toggle. Okay, let's close this. And then we should see a button and voila, it opens the menu. So this wasn't really uh, obvious to me from the React Navigation and from the Expo Router docs, but hopefully this helps you to dispatch action. If you have multiple draws, then that's an interesting question, which draw would be toggled? Mm -hmm. Good question. I should have asked my question that upfront. Um, if you have multiple draws, I anyway would question your, your sanity because I don't like applications with multiple draws and you should probably use a different pattern because that's hell of a confusing for me. So uh, I honestly don't know if you have multiple draws. Uh, probably we can somehow access them correctly in that case. Um, or maybe we're just on the page and uh, oh, I don't know. Leave a comment if you want to know more. Maybe we can cover this in a future video because it's really like an edge case in most cases. So we have a cool menu and we can control the menu from code. Now we come to probably why you clicked on this video because this is not what you want to have in your application. You want more control. You want full freedom. Um, above everything the inside your site menu. And you wanna create a cool layout. So you want a cool layout, we will create a cool layout. Let's see, um, where do we start? Well, the general idea is that we now create a new function uh, that returns like a custom drawer content. I will just do it in here. Uh, so it's a bit easier and we don't need to switch between files. Should we do it somewhere else, I wonder? Mm, would it be cleaner for you if we did it somewhere else? It probably would. Yeah, probably. Let's do it. Uh, why do I always have to switch plans when I record? I don't know. It's never a good idea. It's really never a good idea. Okay, let's do this here. Let's cut this out. Let's put it in here. Export default function custom draw content. Congratulations, Simon. Okay, so in here, we're gonna return something. Um, basically, we're gonna return a draw content scroll view. Um, and we can pass all, oops, sorry about that one. Uh, we can pass the props in it. Oh, of course, not like this, more like this. Um, and within the draw content scroll view, we could then still stick to what the React Navigation draw is actually using. So you could use a draw item list. Uh, and again, we're gonna put in the props here. And after that, um, let's just close it. This is pretty much the standard setup, I think. So if we now use this component, or if we wanna use this, we can use the custom draw content here, custom draw content, and set it to our custom draw component. Okay, um, actually it's not, it's it's draw content, uh, draw content. So if we now hit save and reload, we should see that nothing has changed. So is our content actually displayed from here? Well, let's see. Let's add another draw item and we're gonna make this a custom item. So we can just use it in the way. Uh, I will give it a label. Let's say you have a lockout button uh, and you wanna manually place this below. So on press, you wanna do something. Uh, we can close this here. Maybe you wanna do the router. Actually, we can use the router. So const router equals use router from expo router and remove the import that was wrong and we're gonna do router.replace. So you would probably go to your login page back in that case. We don't really have a login page. Uh, let's see if we now reload. Da -da 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 -da. We have a button. So that means we are now actually rendering this component instead of the default uh, router. So that's the big mindset shift. 
uh, we're not using what we automatically get, but instead use our own draw content, which is passed to the draw component here. And this is, if we remove this, basically how it would look if you look into the docs or the GitHub repository of the React Navigation. And based on this, you can now do pretty much whatever you want. So um, let's try to build up a side menu where we have like a header area with a little image and some text. Then we're gonna have the items here and we're also gonna have a footer at the bottom. Uh, so therefore I will wrap this first of all into a view with a style uh, flex one. So that should span the whole view. And on top of that, because I know that we don't really have a ton of items, I will set this here disabled because I don't like this. So I will say scroll enabled equals false. Okay, so now, yeah, probably when it reloads, let's do a reload. When it reloads, yeah, we don't see any scroll behavior anymore. Um, additionally, I will give this some content container style uh, with a color and some padding. So let's do a content container style, uh, background color, and I used a pretty cool color before, so let me bring that in. Okay, do we see the color anywhere? Do I always have to reload now? No, not really. Okay, so we see we have a light blue color. Now, from the top, um we want to do something more so what i would like to do is i think i want to do this here in my layout file um so i want to hide this up here when we open this there's actually a pretty cool setting for that so we can now on our draw component also define screen options to customize like not on the level of one item but on the level of the whole draw and in here we could say something like draw height status bar on open which i found to be a really nice setting so if the app is like this you see it's here and now it fades out which is a really nice thing i don't know who thought about this or who implemented this but i really like it i uh, appreciate it um, then we can have like an active background color and styling for our items. Right now we have this blue. So let's change this to have an active background color that is more a dark blue and a white active tint. So we got items like this. I think it's already a good start. Um, maybe also the label position here is a bit too far away from the icon. So in that case, you could put in a draw label style like this and just change the margin left to move the stuff closer to the icon. Um, just an idea of things that we could do. Now let's get back to our draw component. Um, in many cases, we have automatically the safe area applied as we can see here. Um, but if you want to manually use this, there's actually a pretty easy way with the use safe area insets hook. So you can just get the values of the safe area by using use safe area insets from React Native safe area context. And then we got like these top and bottom values. So in my case, I probably want to say for the content in here, uh, it should use the padding top like this. Why is it never updating that view? That's so annoying. Um, actually, I think if we use it like this, it's probably already having the right padding, but we're gonna come back to that in a second. Now, our view should consist of two different things. We're gonna have a footer <clears throat> and we're gonna have uh, the actual uh, view with the image included. Let's put in the footer first. That should come after the scroll view. So I will just add uh, footer and text. Can we just import this? No, we never. We can never do this automatically. I know. I know. It's too hard to add that. So I would now have this area somewhere, and I don't know why. It's like my my auto reload broken or something. Usually this this stuff just works. Why do I have to come recompile my app? Probably because it's in a different file. Mm, maybe that's the case. Um, I think my head is covering it, so I'm just showing you that we now have the footer area at the bottom with that text. We have a little border color uh, and some padding, and especially we use padding bottom, including the bottom value of the use safe area inset. So we notice if we wouldn't use this, 
uh, if I remove this uh, and then my application would somehow reload, that would be pretty cool. And we would see it's like down here and we have a problem uh, on iOS. So always make sure you're respecting the safe areas and thanks for not updating my site nav. This is really super annoying. And you could easily now place whatever kind of button you wanted into that footer. So that only leaves us with one more thing to implement, which is our uh, area up here. Um, in my drawer, scroll content, whatever, uh, I will now first of all put an additional view. So let's add a view. <clears throat> Maybe we're gonna do some styling in a second. And in that view, I wanna place an image. So I will just use an image of myself uh, from galaxies. And oh, come on, just add the import. I, I hate this so much. If somebody could make this a bit easier for me and also the auto update of my application, then I would be so pleased. Uh, maybe I'm gonna just keep this open so I can just instantly press R. Okay, not too bad, not too bad. Uh, let's give this some padding as well. Padding 20. Mm, yeah, I know it's not updating today. So here we go, yeah, with more padding. I mean, it would be really cool if we had like padding. Can we, I will just stop this for once because this really should work. NPX Expo, I, and iOS. Is it really just because this is in a, in a different file? I mean, when I developed this, I was pretty sure that like it worked. So if I change this now, oh, that's so crazy. Let's, let's do one try. Uh, I will copy this stuff here. I will put it up here. Uh, now we get all the errors for the uh, imports. Let's see if I uh, fix all, fix all, everything, add all. Where's add all missing imports? Uh, add all missing imports. Yeah, and still the image is missing. Uh, but I really want to do this in here. And the text is, of course, missing as well. Thank you, text element. So if I now use the custom draw content, um, and do something about it. Let's see, I will do one reload before, and now I will add open the menu and let's set the padding to 40. Now it works, you see? This is crazy. Just because it's in the different file, it's not working. So I will just implement it for now in this file and then move all the stuff into the custom drawer content or you've seen however you wanna do this. Um, so let's get back. I'm really, really annoyed with this. Um, I will place a little text below the image as well. So both of these things will be aligned in the center and we have that nice area up here. Isn't that cool? Like it's really not that hard to implement stuff like this. Um, only thing is that my list is kind of stuck with the view. So I want to give my draw item list actually its own view. So let's add its own view and it will have a background color of white instead. So that should override uh, the styling that we had before. So I've wrapped this around my items and voila, it turns white. Additionally, I would probably like to give this some padding top more um, to make it, yeah, 10 should be probably be enough. And I think that's a pretty nice menu, isn't it? It's nice that like for the last two properties, we, we use the new approach and now it works. It's sometimes it's annoying, but anyway, it's what I wanted to show you. So you've seen, we can easily create a menu. Um, if we just use the draw with Expo Router, it's using direct navigation under the hood. You can define all these screen options and stuff, of course, already here. So maybe you don't need this custom setup like we did uh, with the header and image and the buttons and custom button. Um, but maybe you do. And if you want to customize it, just use your own custom draw content here. You can still use some of the components as we've seen, so you should probably use the draw content scroll view and also the item list or draw item. Now, uh, one last thing, if you really wanna make this completely custom, there's also a way to do this. Um, I will just bring in some code because I think it's also another of these uh, edge cases. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna add this here. I will call this custom fancy <clears throat> draw content. And you see, we need a few things. So we need to um, add or uh, type props. So we can then get the state and descriptors from these props. This is actually passed to the custom fancy draw content. And I will use the custom fancy draw content down here. 
Now, what we see here is a list of the routes. And we're completely manually returning this now. So we're not using any of the uh, drawer content scroll view item list item. We're really implementing our own items. So that means you can technically go through the routes um, and you get the route information for every single item here. You see, we actually get more than we had before. So this is from Expo. We got a sitemap and a 404 page and not just our three pages. Also, this is kind of getting really hard. So we do have the route name. So the route name is the first thing. And to get like the clean name that we implemented uh, here, we need to use descriptors, route key, options, draw label. And then you can also access like the draw icon and other stuff. But again, this becomes really, really challenging. Um, and you'll lose a lot of the benefits that we had before. So I think this is really only helpful. You also lose like the margin top of the safe area. Yes, you can do a lot of custom stuff, but I think with the approach that we used before uh, with our custom draw content, I think we're pretty good off because we can customize most of the stuff with, with our styling. Uh, we can create our own views here in the menu if we want to. And I think this should probably cover like 90% of the cases. So if you have something other special that really requires you to completely redo uh, the draw navigation, then you can do it like this by using the state and descriptors. And again, you can find, of course, the code also on galaxies. So check that out. I hope you enjoyed this breakdown of how you can customize the draw component with React Navigation and especially if you're using the Expo router. If you want to see this in combination with the login page, check out the other streams and videos on this channel. I think I used this pattern a few times now where we have like a login and then we move to an inside area, which is usually inside of a folder. But you could also just take everything we implemented and move it into a draw folder and then have something else in front of it. If you enjoyed it, please also leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more videos. Check out galaxies.dev, which is my course platform for all React Native developers. And I will hopefully catch you in the next video. So until then, happy coding, Simon. <laughs>